Verano. It means summer in Espanol, which kind of fits because Buick is trying to make hay while the sun shines on compact premium cars. Let's drive this 2013 Verano Premium T for turbo and check the tech. Well, it's got a lot of GM DNA that you'll recognize. It's a cousin to the Chevy Cruze in terms of platform, and it's a sibling to the Opel Astra. We don't get that here in the U.S., but you can see it's part of a very big, broad platform for General Motors. Spot of Verano by its tidy size, kind of three series looking rear quarter, and by the trademark Buick grille, a toothy affair that comes almost as far back on the hood as the freakish headlights on a Nissan Leaf. Also spot one of these guys by the Venta ports. I think only Buick and maybe Maserati do these things. They are fake portholes that date back to 1949. Even back then, they didn't actually go through the hood. They are decoration, but they're signature Buick. There's this complicated formula that you Buick buffs know for how they decided if there are three or four on each side. Great Buick trivia. Some combination of trim and number of cylinders. All I know is this. This may be the first era for which there are more Venta ports on the hood than there are cylinders under it. And the first thing most folks notice when they get in the Verano is, wow, it's kind of fancy in here. You got three different kinds of metal trim, metalized trim, two or three shades of soft trim around that. To my eye, it's just my opinion, it's fancy the way an Olive Garden is Italian, which isn't to say that neither are, but there's something kind of ersatz about it. Now, the bell of the ball is this screen right here. This is the IntelliLink interface in a 7-inch touch LCD, but kind of set back into that cowl. All Veranos have the IntelliLink screen. Not all of them, though, have DVD and navigation. You have to option up into that. Standard sources include Bluetooth streaming, Pandora, and Stitcher via Bluetooth link. And on the more mundane side, AM, FM, CD, satellite, USB plus iPod, aux jack, all the hits you want, but notice no HD radio. Here's what may be the oddest start-stop switch I've ever seen on a car. It's so fiddly and dainty, it took me like a full minute to figure out how to start this thing the first time. I'm looking over here for a big old engine button. That thing's weird. Also weird, and more substantially so, are some interface gaffes on this car. Just three that come to mind. For example, let's say I'm listening to Pandora or radio or satellite, doesn't matter. From that screen, I can't get to the tone controls. To do so, I have to go to Home, then I have to go Next, then I have to hit the Tone app, and now I can adjust the sound. That's interface for interface's sake, I think. Here's another one. The climate control knobs just have a couple of representative temperatures on them. I don't really know where I am. To find out, I have to actually move the temperature. Then, about a second later, this comes up at the bottom of the display. Now I see what temperature I'm on. Then I can move the temperature where I want it. By then, the display is gone, and it has to come back to confirm what I just did. That's a mess. And you'll use temperature controls a thousand times in a car like this. And like many Fords, this screen is set too far in, surrounded by this fence of kind of uh, plastic garnish. It's hard to get to these buttons that are down here. And in many cases, they're just too damn small. And notice this, these buttons here on the Pandora screen and many others are very small, hard to hit. You got this plastic garnish in the way, but I can't use my control knob to get to them. You have to touch them or nothing. Now, our little Verano's got a high-tech motor up front because we have the premium trim. All the other cars get a fairly routine 2.4-liter Ford. We have a smaller 2-liter side saddle four with an intercooled turbo and direct injection, variable valve timing, just about everything's been thrown at it. That gives you some nice numbers from a little motor. 250 horse, 260 foot-pounds of torque. Zero to 60 for this 3,550-pound car takes a tidy 6.2 seconds while delivering 2130 rated MPG. Front-wheel drive on this car only. Two choices for transmission, six-speed automatic or six-speed manual. That's a pick. Now, Buick says all Veranos get quiet tuning, not sport tuning. That's very telling. And the driving is exactly what's promised. Smooth and quiet at all times. It's a capable handling car, but it doesn't reach into the serious driving realm at any time.
As for the engine, the revs float too high and for too long between gears. A lot of modern cars do this. Although this car has no lift shift, which means you can keep your foot flat on the accelerator while you work the clutch on the gear shifter, and it'll handle rev matching. A weird sort of hot hatch feature to find on a car like this. Okay, let's price our Verano. $30,000 on the nose, delivered for the premium, the top trim, that includes the turbo engine. 900 bucks for that glass power sunroof, that's a nice addition. 795 to add nav and DVD playback to the IntelliLink head unit. We're at like 31.7 with just about everything CNET style. Now here's my take on this car. It slots above Accord, Camry, and Fusion, but below 3 Series and C-Class, and it's got its own sort of an identity crisis. It's got sporty things like a turbo motor, no lift, shift, and the available 6-speed, but it's mostly a very nice car with lots of chrome and bling and a very comfortable ride. I'm not sure it knows what it wants to be, but for you, it's the car to consider when you want to get a compact that feels like you're driving more than you paid for.